In this video, we're going to do two questions on the squeeze theorem. So for the first question, we want to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the square root of x times e to the sine pi over x is equal to 0. So what we do with the squeeze theorem, of course, is we take an upper bound, some function f of x, and then we take a lower bound, some function g of x, and then we try to squeeze uh, the point at this function, square root of x, e to the sine pi over x, at that point zero, and show that, hey, the upper bound is equal to zero, the lower bound is equal to zero, therefore this function must equal zero. So what we'll do is we'll start with the function sine of pi over x. So what's the upper and lower bounds on this function? Well, any sine or cosine can be between one and negative one. Okay, so sine of pi over x will be between negative one and one. Okay, so let's raise this to the power of e. So here we have e to the negative one is gonna be less than or equal to e to the sine pi over x, which is less than or equal to e to the one. Okay, now let's multiply everything by the square root of x. So we're gonna have the square root of x over e. So just remember that e to the negative one is the same thing as one over e. Okay, so this will be less than or equal to the square root of x times e to the sine pi over x. And this will be less than or equal to the square root of x times e. Okay, so now we can take the limit as x approaches zero from the right. So we take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x over e. This is going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x e to the sine pi over x. And this is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x times e. Okay, so let's evaluate these. Well, zero from the right of the square root of x over e this is just going to be 0 over e, which is equal to 0. So it's going to be less than or equal to, well, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of the square root of x times e to the sine of pi over x. Okay, now let's evaluate the square root of x times e. Well, we just put the 0 into the square root of x, and this is just 0 times e, which is 0. Therefore, because the lower bound is zero and the upper bound is zero, the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the square root of x times e to the sine pi over x is also going to equal zero. So that's how you use the squeeze theorem. Let's do a second example. If two x is less than or equal to gx is less than or equal to x to the four minus x squared plus two for all x, let's find the limit as x goes to one of g of x. So this one's a little bit more straightforward, but Sometimes it's a little bit more confusing because I'm giving you something on the left and I'm giving you something on the right and it's kind of weird, like why am I getting that? Well, in this case, all we need to do is evaluate the left and right side as x goes to one. And if they're the same number, then we know what g of x is gonna be at x equals one or the limit as x approaches one. So we take the limit as x approaches one of two x which is going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches one of g of x, which is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches one of x to the four minus x squared plus two. So we evaluate the left and right sides here. So two times one is going to be two. This is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches one of g of x and we just plug in one for these. This will be one minus one plus two, which is equal to two. Therefore, the limit as x approaches one of g of x is going to equal two. Now, let's do a hypothetical here. Let's assume that maybe it was two to the x four. Okay, so two to the x four, well, now what we get on the right side would be two minus one plus two, which is equal to three. So what does this mean? Well, now, instead of having a value for limit, we know 
that the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is somewhere between 2 and 3. So we don't know where it is, but it's going to be somewhere in 2 to 3. So if you get this kind of weird thing on an exam question, you're saying, wait a second, why didn't I get the right number? Well, it might just be that you weren't supposed to solve for an exact number, but rather where it lies in an interval. So it's somewhere there. So that's it for the squeeze theorem. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.